in behavior. In behavior is what a function does well, at its ends. Or, really, you can think about it as what happens when x gets really, really big or really, really small. And we have special notation for that either. Also, so let's review using polynomials. Now, polynomials will always just keep going on and on forever, up or down. So let's say we had something like this as our graph. We have two sides to this. We can look at what happens as x goes to positive infinity and what happens as x goes to negative infinity. We're talking about positive infinity. We're talking about the right side. So what is my graph doing there? My graph is going straight up. It's going to positive infinity as well. On the other side, it's going straight down. So f of x is going to negative infinity. So polynomials will always go to either positive or negative infinity. What we want to look at is what happens with rational functions. So let's look at f of x equals 4x minus 6 over 2x plus 6. Let's see what we know already. Do we know our x-intercept? x-intercept comes from looking at the numerator. So what makes 4x minus 6 equal 0? Our x-intercept would be 6 divided by 4, which is 3 halves. Our y-intercept is found by letting x be 0. So when we let x be 0, we get negative 6 over 6, which is just going to be negative 1. Our vertical asymptote occurs when the denominator is 0. So what would make that be 0? Negative 6 divided by 2, that's negative 3. So we know all of this. It'd be really nice to know just a little bit more information about what it does at the edges or what it does at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and get my graph ready and then we're going to look in the calculator and see if we can make any more predictions. Okay, so if I look at this in the calculator, remember, we're going to go in and put parentheses around the numerator, divided by 2x plus 6, and let's see if we're right about a lot of it. Okay, vertical asymptote, yes, y-intercept, x-intercept. But look at what it's doing on the edges. It looks like it's kind of flattening out. Let's even zoom out. It's not going up or down like a polynomial. I'm going to go back to the standard view. It almost looks like we have a horizontal line there. looks like it might be at 2. We do. We have what is called a horizontal asymptote at 2. We have a horizontal asymptote. Now knowing that, that makes it even easier to graph. At 2, we had a horizontal one. We have a vertical one at negative 3. My y-intercept was negative 1. X-intercept is one and, a half, 1 and a half. So we can already tell what it's going to do. It's going to come up. Now remember, asymptotes, they get really close to, but never touch. So if we're talking about the end behavior as the function, we're going to use the right notation. Now, it's actually going the same place on both edges, getting really, really close to 2. So, as x gets big or small in either direction, doesn't matter, f of x is flattening out. 
to be very similar to the line y equals 2. Now, I wonder how we could have figured that out. When x gets really, really, really big, let's say it becomes a million. 4 million minus 6. Is the minus 6 really going to make a difference? Not really. 2 million plus 6. Ooh, if I add 6 to a million, that really makes a difference. It doesn't. What really makes a difference are those leading coefficients. So if we look at that, 4x divided by 2x, it gives me the 2. So that's how you can find out your end behavior. Divide out those leading terms. Let's try it on the next one. The next one is f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 1 over 2x minus 4. Now this one's a little bit harder. I can't find my x-intercepts right off the bat. I do know I have a vertical asymptote. Where's my vertical asymptote? My vertical asymptote is going to be at negative 2, or at positive 2, sorry, 2x minus 4. I know I'm going to have a y-intercept at negative 1 fourth, but I don't know much else. Let's see if we can figure out what this graph does. So I'm going to go into my calculator. y equals parentheses x squared minus 5x plus 1 divided by 2x minus 4. Oh, came in at an angle and shot up like that. So it did something. I know it's going to go through there. Came up, went up like that, and this side came in and went off like this. It's, it's, it's almost like there's something slanted along the lines. If we zoom out, Look, that looks just like a line. This one is not a horizontal line like the last one. This one has what is called a slant asymptote. And let's see what, what it's going to behave like. Um, if we divide, like we talked about up here, if I divide 4x by 2x, I got 2. So let's see what happens when I divide here. If I divide x squared by 2x, I will get one half x, which is a line that is linear. So as x approaches positive or negative infinity, this graph is going to behave like this line. You know, it could have um, another term there. We don't know. But it's behaving like a line. It has a slant asymptote. See what happens on our last example. Oh, this one looks like it can factor. So we might be able to find out a lot about this one. Um, let's try to make our list again x-intercept when the numerator is 0. So that's going to be negative 2. y-intercept is when x is 0. 6 divided by negative 15 is going to be 2 fifths. Vertical asymptote occurs when the denominator is 0. So on this one, I might want to factor it. X minus 5, X plus 3. Looks like I'm going to have two vertical asymptotes, one at 5 and one at negative 3. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Here's my x-intercept. Here is one of my vertical asymptotes. Here is the other one. And my y-intercept about here. Okay, so we don't know what's going on with the rest of it. Let's look at the graph. 3x plus 6 divided by x squared minus 2x minus 15. If I look at the graph, ooh, I'm, I got zoomed way out, didn't I? Let's see. Let's go back to standard. Okay. So if I kind of copy what, what I saw, see there, I see it coming along right along the x-axis and then shooting this way. This one is going down hitting that x-intercept, hitting that y-intercept, and then going this way. And this one's going here. Now, it looks like it's hugging the x-axis over here and here. I know there's no more x-intercepts, so it never crosses the x-axis again. But it looks like on the ends, it's going to hug the x-axis. So let's see if I'm right. If I take 3x and divide by x squared, I'd have 3 over x. Now let's think, what happens as x goes to positive infinity? What's going to happen when x gets really, really, really big? Now remember, when x gets really, really big, when that denominator gets really, really, really big, our whole fraction goes to zero. And it does. We have a horizontal asymptote. So if you end up with it going to a certain number, that's a horizontal asymptote. When you have it going, when you divide and you get a linear, you're going to have a slant. If you divided and got a quadratic, you would have a parabolic asymptote. So there's several different asymptotes you can have. But these are your main ways you'll find it. When the numerator and denominator have the same exact degree, it's going to be easy. It's always going to be a horizontal, and you find it just by dividing. When the numerator has a higher degree, you still just divide, but you're going to have a slant. Uh, you can also have a parabolic. You could have a cubic. There's a lot of options. just depends on how much difference they are. Now, if you see that the denominator has a higher degree, when you divide, you will always have a variable left in the denominator. That means you're always going to flatten out to zero on the edges. Now, you notice it's not a true asymptote here. The middle is doing whatever it wants. What we're talking about is end behavior, looking at what happens at the ends. Doesn't matter what goes on in the middle, it's what happens at the ends.